My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers those, to have, confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray, asking God to gather Christ to Himself. You're very welcome as we come to receive the remains of Christ and a special welcome. We're delighted Father John is able to join us. Lord, in our grief we turn to you. Are you not a God of love who opens your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for our sister Chris, whom you have called out of this world. Lead her to your kingdom of light and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest granted to her, Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. May our soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Those at the back of the church, there's plenty of room here on my right hand side and on my left hand side. So we'd appreciate maybe if you came up out of safety, not be standing at the back of the church, please. So there's plenty of room on my right hand side and on my left hand side. Thanks very much. We begin the Mass, please, God, at 12.
for sons of Moss, Mighty, and Noble, our only daughter Ida, predeceased by sisters Ned and Sheila, Noreen and Noreen, brothers Jack and Tom, sisters in law Joan and Mary, brothers in law Billy, Mike, and Wayne, survived by her sister Nancy, her brothers Wayne and Charlie, her adored grandchildren, Sean, Emer, Connor, Rory, Thomas, Catherine, Searsha, and Phil. Her daughter in law is Teresa, Yvonne O'Neill, and Yvonne Murphy, Edith Hartman Rowan, her in law's nephew's nieces, relations, and friends. And in a very special way, the family would like to welcome all who are joining us online, especially our husband, Yvonne, her son, Tomas, in California. His wife, Teresa, and their daughters, Catherine and Saoirse. Her son, Noah, in Australia. His wife, Yvonne. Sons, Connor, Rory, and Fiona. Her brother, Wayne, and family in Canada. And her brother, Charlie, and family in the England. And the many friends who would like to hear what can be with us today who are joining us online. At the heart of our faith is God's love for us. We ask the Lord now to bless us with peace and healing. Lord, we thank you especially for the gift of family. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of friendship. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And we thank you that we are part of your family. We are there for one another, especially in times of joy, especially in times like today. We are there supporting one another in prayer. Christ, have mercy. And we thank you especially for the confidence you have in each one of us to be your presence in the world. You call each one of us to reflect your love, especially for those who suffer in our world. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully granted through this history, our sister Chris, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So we invite you to see the readings. We invite you to go on with the first reading, on the second reading, where it's like Soviet Sam and the constant acclamation with the song. First reading is a reading, uh, a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a season for everything time for every occupation under heaven, a time for giving birth, a time for dying, a time for planting, a time for uprooting what has been planted, a time for killing, a time for healing, a time for knocking down, a time for building, a time for tears, a time for laughter, a time for mourning, a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones away, a time for gathering them up. A time for embracing, a time to refrain from embracing. A time for searching, a time for losing. A time for keeping, a time for throwing away. A time for tearing, a time for sowing. A time for keeping silent, a time for speaking. A time for loving, a time for hating. A time for war, a time for peace. What do people gain from the efforts they make? I contemplate the task that God gives humanity to labour at. All that he does is act for time. But although he has given us an awareness of the passage of time, we can grasp neither the beginning nor the end of what God does. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. My life has already been poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. The Lord will rescue me from all evil attempts on me and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh. Christmas Day in 1933, 
in Kila Colleen Tuna Fala. Her parents were Tom and Julia Long. She was part of a large family of ten. She was one of the oldest of the children. Both parents like young and Chris, together with the oldest children, care for the younger children. Isn't that what the heart of faith is all about? A mother is at the heart of a home. Few people make as many sacrifices as good mothers. Chris adored his family as grandchildren. Herself and me all made so many sacrifices for you. They wanted you to be, have a good education and to care for you. But love was at the heart of her home. She always had a great welcome for people. She loved the simple things in life. She loved the gardening, current affairs and news. She loved the Irish. She had a great outlook in life, a great sense of humour. It's a great gift in life. But for Grace, faith was so much part of her life. In her head, she'd be here for morning mass here in Florida. Mass was so important to her. But her faith was a way of life. And I've no doubt that that faith was with her in times of joy and in times of sadness. When sickness comes to a person, no matter what age, it's very hard to accept. Chris, you in July 19th uh, this year that her prognosis was not good. But she made a sense of acceptance. And that is at the heart of our faith. She always deeply appreciated the care that was given to her by you, the family, and her carers. And especially more recently, the great care that was given to her in bid for care and the great welcome they had for the family. So we so much to be grateful for. But that doesn't take away the pain of loss. The loss of someone that has been so much part of our life. But I believe, and our faith tells us, that our loved ones are very close to us. They are with us in spirit. Yes, they have gone ahead of us. But it's lovely to know we will join them again, where there will be no more pain or suffering. May Chris's gentle soul rest in peace. So we stand now for the prayers of the faithful. We invite Sean, Emer, and Thomas Bauer down for the prayers, please.
they can place the gifts on the altar piece. So they can knock the gifts and place them on the altar. And giving you thanks, he said, Bessie, 
He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chance and gave him thanks, he said, Bless him. He gave the chance to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chance of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, my Lord and my God. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and giving sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the obligation of your church, and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose sake you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, and Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely on our own faith in them. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation be clear, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your brilliant church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, friend, and our bishop, the bishops, the clergy, and the entire people who have gained the world. <coughs> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember our sister Chris whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who is united with your son in a day like this, may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth you will raise up the flesh those who have done it, and transform our holy body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all the conquer brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you that are passing from this time, Give kind and means to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end. True Christ our Lord, true whom you restore the world all that is good. Show him and with him and take him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, but are ever and ever. Kindness from an hour, by whom our song will be for you.
we may be always saved from sin, saved from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God and the glory of you is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my own peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And we pray for one another now, for our wife and family, that God will bless us with peace and healing. And in a very special way, we pray for the family members who are joining us online. Now, of God, we take the great sin of the Lord and have mercy on us. Now, of God, we take the great sin of the Lord and have mercy on us. Now, of God, we take the great sin of the Lord and have mercy on us.
Mammy didn't want a eulogy, so if you're listening in, Mammy, don't worry. I haven't started disobeying you just yet. The readings and the communion reflection today that we chose reminded us of how Mammy had lived her life, and in the past few months, how she had so gracefully and fearlessly faced her diagnosis. She underwent treatment, which at times was absolutely torturous so that she could buy us some extra time with her and to allow us to come to terms with losing her. But I think that she herself was ready to face her God in July. The past few months have been her parting gift to us and we are so, so grateful for that. It's because of the wonderful care of so many people that she was able to really enjoy especially the time at home with us. They say that it takes a village to raise a child, but as a family, we certainly realized in the past months that it also takes a family, a village, to care for a loved one who is ill. To all of the staff we met in the oncology unit, in the Mater Private, in University Hospital Limerick, and in the Milford Care Centre, we're so, so grateful to you all. We appreciate also the staff looking after Daddy in St. Catherine's for the past few months, as it allowed us to focus on caring for Mammy at home. To our home help teams, morning, evenings and weekends, you all went over and above on so many occasions for us, and we're very, very grateful for that. On so many times, we've said to each other that we simply couldn't have coped 
without the help of our extended family. You've been amazing, but that's no surprise. You always have been. To our wonderful, kind neighbours, our friends who haven't left our shoulders, to our partners and to everyone who have helped to lighten the burden of the past few months. Mila Buikas, to all of you. We had such a lovely time at home with Mammy. We sang, we laughed, we reminisced, we drank copious cups of tea, and we ate far too many pavlovas and tarts. Mammy was well enough to really enjoy all her visitors, and she always loved being around people. Her sense of humour, her love of fun never left her. She would have loved today's Mass, the flowers, the music and the beautiful ceremony. So we'd like to thank everybody who has helped to make this happen. If heartbreak is the price of love, then be assured, Mammy, you were deeply, deeply loved by all of us. The communion reflection is called Safely Home, and this was one that Mammy often read in her prayer book. I am home in heaven, dear ones, oh so happy and so bright. There is perfect joy and beauty in this everlasting light. All my pain and grief is over, every restless tossing past. I am now at peace forever, safely home in heaven at last. Did you wonder how I so calmly trod the valley of the shade? It's because Jesus' love illuminated every dark and fearful glade. And he came himself to meet me in that way so hard to tread. And with his arm to lean on, how could I have had any doubt or dread? Then you must not grieve so sorely, for I love you dearly still. Try to look beyond earth's shadows, play to trust our Father's will. There is work still waiting for you, so you must not idly stand. Do it now while life remaineth, and you shall rest in Jesus' land. And when that work is all complete, he will gently call you home. Oh, the rapture of that meeting, and my joy when I see you come. Good night, Mammy. God bless you. Just as Ida just said at the very end, safe home, ma'am. I can well imagine that St. Peter is up there saying, Oh, Chris, I went you from Fiona. I knew you used to go to Mass every day in Fiona Church. And down there, just behind her, Con Judy is, she was being in that seat every morning. And I needn't tell you, Chris never shouted. She was always so quiet and it's a, a person of quiet disposition, but she was a beautiful lady, and 
for coming to Mass here every day will be one great memory I have, but also of, which was mentioned already, her wonderful hospitality. As I say, it wouldn't be good for you if you were on a diet, but anyhow, uh, we were always received with great grace. And remember the term that Ida used there, gracefully. It's so fitted her. So now we asked St. Peter to welcome her in and she meet Mass, Mass Reardon and many other people, a few who have gone before her. So before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her, her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And the response to our psalm, as Father Joe will bless her coffin with the holy water and spirit, incense through her remains in the temple of the Holy Spirit, we pray our psalm, and the response is, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid, hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. See her soul present to God the most high. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Chris in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you find eternal rest. And so in peace and a little while, let us take our sister to a place of rest.